Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about automotive specific test types that is static and dynamic. And as a part of this we are still in the first segment 4.1 static testing or static test techniques. As a part of this segment, we have covered the first part of it, that is Mr. C guidelines, as a part of our previous tutorial, and 4.1.2 is what we are looking at today, is the quality characteristics for the reviews of requirements. So here, we generally talk about the quality characteristics which can be measured as a part of reviewing certain work products. So let's understand what's more in this particular section of the static test technique. So specifications are always the basis for the development and testing. Therefore, defects in those specifications lead to cost and time intensive follow up activities. This applies, especially if the defects are only detected in late development phases, such as acceptance testing or in operation. Reviews are an effective measure to find defects in specifications early and consequently be able to fix them early at low cost. So of course, we have learned all these from our foundation level syllabus. That's why I'm not insisting more on these statements. But yes, a quick recap. If you remember, we had a principle and we have discussed this in the previous tutorial as well, that static testing not only helps you to find defect earlier, but also it is cheaper to resolve a defect in the life cycle. Because if we have done minimal effort or minimal activities at this point of time in order to rework to resolve a defect. So thus, fixing and definitely finding and fixing a defect much earlier in the life cycle or during static testing can save a lot of time and money. In turn, it will increase your productivity when you are in development and in testing life cycles. And you will have definitely less defects at that point of time. No matter that, but if you find a lot of defects during the dynamic executions of the test cases, it is definitely expensive to fix them. Now, during test analysis, which is the phase of the fundamental test process from the foundation, you must recall a lot of your foundation's uh, information at any point of time. The tester must check the specification for the test item. In doing so, the specifications are especially checked with regards to their suitability as a test pieces. Now, this point basically says that at some point of time, while doing analysis, while you're reviewing a certain work product, which is probably your test basis, of course, like specification, design, architecture, or uh, anything else, which you are referring to be as a test basis, it definitely uh, will be parallelly checked for suitability, that how suitable the specification is for certain test types. For example, if you're talking about integration, does it include the necessary information about the data integrity level or the communication or interfaces between the modules or the components, then we can make use of it as a test basis for integration. So suitability will also be measured while being reviewing the work products initially during the static test technique. Now, a new thing what we are coming up with is quality characteristics. If you remember your foundation level syllabus, as a part of quality characteristics, we have discussed that these are non-functional parameters. But right now, we are not, not at the dynamic test levels. We are talking about the quality characteristics of a test basis. There are a lot of such things which could be measured from a quality point of view in order to make sure that whether the test basis is suitable for us to use it to further define something. Now that's where quality characteristics will be determined and measured while reviewing a test basis during the test analysis phase. So what are quality characteristics? Quality characteristics help the tester during the reviews of the specification to focus this attention and uh, find as many defects as possible. Now we do have certain standards like ISO, IEC or IEEE 29148. 2011 includes quality characteristics for single requirements as well as for a group of requirements. Now what are they? Let's have a look on that. Requirement characteristics as per ISO IEC IEEE 29148 2011 relevant for the tester. Characteristics for individual requirements respectively for a set of requirements include all these quality characteristics that is verifiable and unambiguous, consistent, complete, traceable, bounded, and singular. So I think a lot of words we are already familiar 
uh, from our previous training that is foundation which we definitely have passed so we do remember all these words but there are some new words as well like bounded and singular so let's understand more about all of these terms one after that so verifiable definitely stands for each requirement can be verified by either a static or dynamic test unambiguous where unambiguous means each requirement contains a clear test condition that what exactly you have to do it does not have a confusion or misguiding statements which might create troubles for you to determine what is that you have to do consistent each requirement is consistent in itself with other requirements complete which has all necessary information which you need to have in order to produce something or make use of it like at the same time all tables and diagrams used are labeled abbreviations and terms users are defined so all those things must be complete or clear at that manner traceable each requirement is clearly marked with a unique id identification number this allows an impact analysis and coverage of the test cases is very transparent at that time so of course traceability helps you to measure the impacts now bounded for a set of requirements it is clearly defined that what is the scope to be developed and therefore tested so it means basically from the point of the boundary that what are the extreme limits which you will be testing or developing during the you know implementation phase and for the testing phases so bounded must be defining a clear boundary to that particular requirement that what are your limits which you must be testing from this requirement point of view because not a not all the requirements uh, are just confined. A lot of such requirements generally have endless thoughts or endless test cases which can be created or we can definitely look forward to a lot of opportunities to be developing as a part of it. But what is that you have it as a limit should be checked here. And singular, no requirement can be divided into sensible partial requirements. That means it must be unique. It should not be having any kind of duplicacy, any kind of you know, relation in terms of like the same requirement written two times or we are just duplicating things. So it must be singular at the same time. Additional thing when we talk here is as a tool for the review. If you talk about the static analysis, if you again remember tool based static analysis is possible for the code reviews because there are a lot of things which generally happens as a part of code review which could not be possible uh, using a manual approach uh, from a human interface. So of course you would need a tool which would be more capable enough and giving you high returns uh, when make, made use for static analysis. So as a tool for the review, the tester can, for example, derive review checklist for the characteristics. Again, about the checklist, we already know from foundation, we have learned two times, one from the static testing point of view, what are checklist based uh, techniques, and definitely from the test technique point of view, that is for dynamic, what is checklist based testing. These review checklists then include suitable questions for the previously mentioned statements, like for verifiable, complete, and unambiguous, everything. We might have a checklist which will be used because definitely checklists are very common when it comes to a product based organization. The tester must answer them to the best of his knowledge and belief. The following list includes an excerpt of the possible question that must be answered for each requirement but this is not limited to that okay this is just an example that these kind of questions could be asked or definitely within your organization you can have more so for example if it is verifiable is the requirement verifiable by static or dynamic test on the according to test level or not explicit does the requirement prevent any room for interpretations or is it not built upon implicit knowledge of experience knowledge or something related to that which could be your past experience as well consistent is the requirement consistent itself and towards other requirements and singular can the requirement not be divided into further partial requirements example by solving logical links such as if then else constructs within the requirements and separately noting the results partial requirements or not so of course answering these questions will help you determine more that if your requirement is really really uh, you know complete with all entities aren't being singular or verifiable consistent and all those manners which could be referred to as the quality characteristics of the requirement and definitely uh, it is important and plays a vital role for the tester at any point of time when involved in static testing of these work products and test bases well that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. 
I'll be there always to answer your questions and respond to them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.